Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up, everybody do your share. Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank number 31. On today's episode... All right, well, here's the deal. I went... I was over at my friend Stevie's uh, apartment, and we were watching a marathon of Hoarders. I've never seen the show before. And it's hilarious. If you guys have never watched it, it's about people who hoard things. You've, you've all seen it, or you've all heard of it at least, right? Hoarders. You know what I'm talking about. So here's the deal. First, when I watched, I just laughed. I just thought it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Um, and then I really got in my head that I wanted to interview a hoarder for my podcast and to hear what that was like and what that was all about. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more I kept thinking about those episodes and those people with, with that affliction of not being able to chuck stuff, um, the more I realized, uh, dude, that's, <laughs> those people are just me. It's, it's everything I think about, like that, how we, different humans have different things in common, but we're all sort of the same people at the heart of it. Those people are just like me. I cannot throw things out. I'm on my way to being a hoarder. Like it was bad. I realized like their, their, their emotional attachment to objects, like over emotionalizing things, uh, their inability to throw things away. I have that stuff just on a lower level. The only difference between me and them was that they had more time to become them. And most of them had more space. I got a one bedroom apartment. Most of them had houses they can grow into. So the only thing that's stopping me from a complete hoarder is that I don't have enough space to push into. So uh, with that realization having been made, uh, I asked a couple friends of mine, uh, Tony Hinchcliffe and Matt Edgar, um, to come and help me clean my apartment. And by ask, I mean I paid them money because nobody's going to do anything for uh, someone else for free, for no reason. So um, it started, the thought was to do it for a little bit. It turned into a lot longer, and we just had a fuck of a time cleaning up. I wanted to talk about hoarding and my craziness, um, but really, I mean, we got with that a little bit. Mostly we talked about um, just how hard it was for days to clean this filth pig of an apartment. I mean, I let it go, you guys. I let it go. So we talked about that, and then we, uh, we also covered uh, modern wrestling quite a lot. Um, this guy, Barry Saturn, in particular. Um, he comes up, and uh, it was a really great, fun conversation. So um, it's going to be fun. But before we get into it, I just want to say that I've uh, been going on the road a lot lately, and the crowds have been really tremendous. I, I really thank you guys if you've come out to the shows in Edmonton or in San Diego or, or anywhere else. Um, you guys have been really supportive. That's Stand-up is really the only thing I care about. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I can get these done every Monday, but I don't really care about it as much as I do stand-up. That's my thing. So the fact that you guys come out and are, are good audiences, that, that really means the world to me. So thank you very much. Uh, and if you want to see where I'm playing, um, anywhere in Los Angeles, I'm usually playing there at the Comedy Store or the Improv or maybe the Laugh Factory or wherever. Um, most of those dates are up on my website as they, as they go, like the week of. Um, go to AriTheGreat.com. Uh, you'll see a, just a whole box over there with all my, with all my um, gigs. And all my road dates will be on their way ahead of time, too. So go check that out. Also, uh, I'll have on there, um, you know, all these episodes of each podcast and links to the iTunes and also some special content. And then I think also I'm going to put, like, when I'm on other people's podcasts, I figure I'll just put that on there, too, right? Like, maybe if you guys want to hear that. I don't know. I mean, whatever. So that'll all be on there. Um, go check it out. And also, if you have any sort of comments on definitely the quality uh technical quality of this podcast if the sound is way off compared to other podcasts let me know let me know which episode it is and if it's distorted or too loud or too soft um let me know and what you like and what you don't like content wise i'm not going to listen to the fuck anybody says but um technically I i'd love to hear it so that's it everybody sit back relax and enjoy ari shafir skeptic tank number 31 the cleanup with Ari Shafir, Matt Egger, and Tony Hinchcliffe. Clean up, everybody do your share. Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up, everybody do your share.
Jesus. All right, here we are. Matt Edgar and Tony Hinchcliffe. Fuck, How are you guys? Fuck. Fuck. <clears throat> yes, Matt, you sound congested. <laughs> you sound congested. No, it wasn't an insult, Matt. He really was just telling you. you no. <laughs> I literally, right when you, you said, let's go, I had a chunk of phlegm in my throat that I tried to clear. You had me at, right out the gate, I was already was dead clumped. on arrival for this podcast. Right. So this is your first podcast, huh? Yeah. I'm already, yeah. Are, are you nervous? <laughs> no, I'm sick. <laughs> Do you know what this is? You're sick with fear? It's a good, I'm sick with a cold. Good news is that it's really good for audio and podcasts to uh, sound like you have phlegm trapped in your nose. I thought throat. about that last night because we were at Barris's place. Yeah. And we were all just sitting there watching a Tom Petty documentary, but he has his when, living night? room. Yeah. What time? After everything? After everything. Yeah. Oh, wow. Until five gotta, in the morning. We set my schedule, so I'm not so tired at, like at two or three. I took a nap like right before I went out. Yeah, me too. I think that's what I'm going to start doing. Take a nap before so you can really party. Oh, yeah. Like, well. A nap between yeah. like 8 and 10 at night is amazing. Yeah. Like wake up early and take a nap. 8 p.m. 10 p.m.? Yeah. And then you wake up for your like spot at night, just fucking jack. I think that's too late. For me, it's too late. Because then at 10. How do you know? You haven't tried it. I've, I've woke up before my spots. I've done that where I, slept, I played Xbox so much that I'm waking up at like 7, 8 p.m. Do you do five-hour energies or anything like that? Sometimes I have to for those things. Wow. Yeah, I'm yeah. just finding out about all that. You know what I'm finding out about five-hour energy? Half of one. That's the right dosage. You know what? Dosage. That's what I was thinking. Because says, on the it back, says it, it says, says you could even, yeah. And, for, and if you do half of one, if you split one somebody, you're like, oh, I just, you don't feel like jacked. All you feel is not tired. That's all Like I you need. had a full night's sleep and you woke up five hours ago. Yeah. yeah. Where you're like, you're just awake. It's like that's all I, I just need to be awake. Yeah. The problem is you took a whole one and then you're like, oh, I can't sleep for 22 hours now. Uh, that's me. Yeah. I don't drink caffeine like you guys uh, do. I have one or two coffees a day. Really? Yeah. Or two a day? Mm-hmm. How do you do that on on a poverty wealth um, income? Oh, coffee's so easy to get to. Really? Yeah. I mean, if it's not free somewhere, why is it's it free? Like a dollar. What? Oh, why is it free? I thought it was like three bucks a piece at Starbucks. Every lobby, every like. Oh, they have it there. The there's banks. always coffee brewing. But that's not where you got that from. That's Starbucks. That's that's. A dollar fifty. Oh, that's all it is. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. You can make you can make do on yeah. that. Yeah, they sell that juice that you're drinking there for like five bucks though. Oh yeah, here. No, don't worry about it. I knew that was gonna come up. I forgot about it. It was. It oh, was it, you don't course. have to pay me. You don't have to pay me. It's it's all good. But it was like he's right. It was how much? It's orange is way too much. It's way too. I expensive. don't know. I don't know why it's so much. But a full <laughs> one of Tropicana costs like four or five bucks. I'll tell you why. That's good because that looks like it's the real deal. No sugar added. 100%, orange juice, 100% juice. juice. Orange juice that's from concentrate is cheap. But real but, orange but juice is expensive. But not, right? Tropicana is fake. Fake? I don't know, man. I've seen the commercials. And according to the commercials, you reach through an orange grove and you pick out <laughs> yeah, man. A, a thing, a carton of Tropicana. That would be false advertising. Yeah. So unless I think you should do more research before I you I guess so. Up. I guess I should just stop reading the small print on the side of the container and just <laughs> listen to the commercials. The, the legally I don't read any required of print that they have to put on there. I look at the artwork on the bottle. That's probably way better. I look at that. I look at like how much detail are they put in, in this. It's not a fucking joke. Um, you know what I want to do? I want to have people here later at night. And that's one of the things I did when I cleaned up, but I still haven't fucking finished this. All right, anyway, we're what? here to talk about hoarding. You guys helped me clean my place. Yes. Um, I uh, I fooled you. Uh-huh. Wasn't intentionally fool you, but I said, hey, who wants to help me? Which f- nearly former door guys want to help me clean my place for, for 100 bucks? Well, here's the thing. I mean, that it, it wasn't even – I didn't even think about it sucking when you asked. I yeah. thought like, oh, that's a fun little thing. Yeah. It's like three – it's three dudes hanging it out. And fun. I knew it was going to be – I knew it was going to be what it was going to be. I mean, it, it was a joke the whole time we were doing it. Yeah, it was supposed to be a lot of fun for a few hours. Yeah. It, what it turned into was a lot of fun for a few hours a day for a few days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, we kind of stretched it out for, it was like a week. After day two, you guys were like, hold on, hold on, let's let's renegotiate. We have to talk. Oh, because, yeah, we did. Because, <laughs> remember, because remember, this is not what we there signed was up like, for. One, there was like one day, I think it was the first day that we literally just for hours uh-huh. hung out. And didn't even start hoarding or didn't even start cleaning. That's my mess. problem with cleaning. It takes so like much we, effort just to start doing yeah. it. Yeah. And it was just three of us. Nobody could like cross that, that line of like, let's actually start cleaning. All right, cleaning. guys, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> just all we're kicking it and laughing for hours. I'm like, oh, shit, guys, we're supposed to be cleaning. Yeah. 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 Well, cleaning sucks and smoking pot and having fun doesn't. So. Well, we also had to break out the, the gravity bong. Yeah. 
the the, the, oh, yeah. the the guys from Skunk Magazine. Um, uh, I guess this episode is sponsored by Skunk Magazine now. Skunk. <laughs> um, that they gave me. It's a, it's like a homemade, not homemade. It's like a factory made gravity bong. It was pretty cool, right? Yeah. Am I wrong? I mean, oh it, yeah. It really I mean, it, did the job. It really, well, it didn't do the job. We did, couldn't. What do we take? Matt's OG. That. What do we have? We had something like super strong. I think we had Matt's OG oh, in that gravity yeah. bomb. I had a, I had a powerful sativa at the time. That's back oh, when yeah. they were still strawberry, the strawberry cough. Shows. Strawberry cough. Do you remember when we walked? I to took Carnies? strawberry cough to to um, well Diaz did to Philadelphia once. Me, Diaz, uh, Red Band, and Joe Rogan all went to um, Philadelphia, and it was it was all about the strawberry cough <laughs> just because oh, Diaz yeah. was like, "We have enough. This is for everybody." Yeah. Uh, but then he started smoking it, and the the green room, the the door. Like the stage on Philadelphia at Helium, there's a door to the green room that you open and you walk right in the side of the stage. Um, so you just kept opening the door just to crack and just blowing pot smoke out while Rogan was on stage for like 10 oh, straight awesome. minutes. Oh, yeah, you told me about it. And then he wouldn't say, Rogan wouldn't say anything. So I'm like, I'll go to the crowd to see if we can see it coming out. And then I, I was like, okay, give me one minute and then keep doing it. And he did it. And you could barely see it from the side, but enough. I'm like, what the fuck? I, he should be able to. And then finally Rogan was like, God damn it! I've been ignoring that pot smoke smell for so long. How much are they smoking in there? Oh <laughs> I just started God, laughing. Hilarious. Like, no, no, we're blowing it out. Did the crowd like that? Like, they really, loved it. They, they, loved they could it. smell it too. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's perfect. And in Helium, and it was the, all the owner, probably, probably like pent up. Oh yeah. The, place the probably owner doesn't come by. He just comes by like the first day. He's a cool guy. He's a cool Jew. But like, uh, he's like, from now on, you animals handle it. You're fine. I'll just make sure you guys are taken care of, and then you guys do whatever you want to do. So That's um, awesome. Yeah, nobody even cares. It's fun. That place is great. Are you playing that place? Just Baltimore. Yeah. Where are you, where are you doing in Baltimore? I have no idea. Who cares? Yeah. There used to be an improv there. I've been terrible. trying not to think about it. Smart. Working with Polly Shore. Yep. That's a tough one. Is he going to make you fold his laundry? Have you ever opened No. Bars? You know what? I don't. No. Honestly, it's, yeah. not, it's not that bad. I, I went to Vegas with him this summer, which... I think that would be if if you don't want to go hang out with Polly for a week. Vegas would be the place town, you don't. Vegas hang would out. be the worst possible. You're with yeah. the weasel in a city just lit up with douchebags. The only cool thing about Vegas that I found out later is um, you pretty much wherever you go, you're a cheap cab ride away from home. That is. You can true. just be like, all right, well, it's four thirty, and I'm tired of shit. So I'm there's always a way home. out. Yeah. You get home for like fourteen yeah, yeah. bucks. You could just press eject from pretty much yeah. anywhere. We'll there. walk if it's warm. All right, but anyway, so we started doing this thing. The gravity bong was amazing. The gravity bong was amazing, and so I guess a good starting point would be would be to say that first thing that you noticed when you came through your door was yeah. a ton of boxes that had just gotten there, like delivered that were unopened, and were like, here they are. What's that? Like a bunch of packages, as if as if you had a bunch of. Uh, gluttonous nights in front of the computer on eBay just ordering things that you'd like. Yeah. And they're still there. They're still there. I was going to do it as Christmas when I fully finished um, fully finished cleaning this place. You were going to have a Christmas for yourself of stuff that you bought yourself, but you forgot what it is. So I, it would be I like, go online late at night when I get could, back. From it's the probably stuff store. that you, you need. You know what? You know what? I, I knew this would happen. Yeah. I knew that like slowly but surely it would come, the come hoarding was going to come back. It's in you, man. All we did was clean up your room. That right, should be its right, own hold podcast. On. Let's talk about let's talk about coming back at the end. Let's go in an order here. I want to go. We didn't this solve the problems that are. I know we didn't solve the problems. The so you get in and you see these things, these packages, these right. boxes. Right, and then you explain it as some weird Christmas thing, and that's when I realized. No, if he's not opening these boxes that are right in front of his door, which are still there, They're then the he the has now. some weird thing of loading stuff up in this place and that's when i already noticed that there was going to be a problem <laughs> especially also then i looked on the other side of that and there was that was over here but there was a Which, lu- there was, was a luggage here? bag oh, yeah. and there was seven other luggage bags inside the so it was like one of those cartoons russian. where the thing will hop out of the thing a russian, you had a like, luggage yeah, bag instead dolls. of a luggage bag uh-huh. yeah the russian dolls you had that's... you had jewish luggage no, Russian dolls I, I aren't knew, Jewish. <laughs> I knew he was going to start hoarding again. Yeah. When I first walked in, just by today. No, 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 no. no the well, time. I mean, it's already kind of started. The first time today. you walked in for the, for, the, for the first time when it was still a mess. Right away, uh-huh. I ha- I knew that there was no way out for you, and that it just it's something in you, and it's going to happen again. Completely by some of the things that you just had in your place. Okay. Well, first of all, like let me, some of the let me little. Explain. 
let me explain okay. what these boxes are. <laughs> you, already, the boxes, you already know what okay, I'm talking about. Our stuff, our stuff that I bought online late at night. Yeah. I have a problem with um, with pot where I think everything's beautiful. I don't think that's a problem unless you don't open it up when you. But then it when comes it gets like house. a week later, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, cool. But look, I've, I can. The only thing that I can blatantly see what it is is a scrubbing bubbles cleaning thing that it looks like it hangs up in your shower. That could probably just be up there helping you with your problems already. Two starter kits by Johnson and Johnson. That's Instead, you have it sitting in boxes like you like it there. Like the that. rest are from Amazon or Woot. You're but a, I forget what they are. You're a hoarder. I forget what they are when I, after I order them. So I'm like, oh, I got to get to that. But I don't need anything. And here's what's creepy about you. Yeah. Is that usually hoarders are like freaky, scary weirdos. Yeah. And you're a cool guy. Yeah. I mean, you're funny. Yeah, I would have never knew. You're awesome. Yeah. You're fun to hang out with. People like you. You have like a star power to you. You're but you cool. Had, and I live, you're educated. And I live pretty, pretty close to the comedy store. But oh you yeah! Got, but you guys have never come over. It would over have here. been easy just to come over one. Yeah, anytime. And hang out. But, yeah, but um. But instead, you're hiding your deep dark secrets. Yeah, but I've never invited anybody over. Yeah. It was too much to the point where it's like I wanted a cleaner to come in. I've had a cleaner come in before. My parents were like, "Oh well, I'll pay for a cleaner for you." Yeah. And I was like, "Cool." But then the last time I had cleaners here, these two Mexicans, this a couple. Mm-hmm. They, I was like, I greeted them outside and I walked them up. I was like, "Listen, just concentrate on the bathroom and the kitchen." Uh, and they're see. like, no, no, we'll do, we'll do everything. And that's like, how, that's how they do it on the show, by the way, hoarders. What? I don't know if you what? ever see it. That's I saw what, it that's once. what the people always do. They're always like, hey, why don't you just go like, uh, just stay away from, uh, you know, the living room, the dining room, the den, the basement, the <laughs> attic. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, yeah, go to the bathroom. Uh, there's one of those. Check that out. Yeah, of course. That's how. Because I was like, that's enough time. That's going to be two hours alone. So I'm like, just concentrate on that shit. Don't well, worry how did about that. Go? They actually did everything. Right. It was great. But when I got in, they were like, "No, no, we do it. We do it all. We do." It all. I have terrible accents, but like, <laughs> but like, uh, we do it all. I don't even know what that is. Oh, we do it all. No, no, but <laughs> is that Armenian? I don't even know what I'm doing. It's, it's definitely not Mexican. Okay. Yeah, we do it all. <laughs> ugh, ugh. It's weird. I can't get working as an actor. Um, <laughs> um, so they came, when he opened the door, he just started laughing. And he goes, "Oh, oh, it is b- bad. Wow." Oh, yeah. Yeah, but they did everything. Yeah. I, and they I, mostly straightened up, tidied things. You know, I'd imagine like, it's clean. actually probably pretty easy to become a hoarder because it is all your stuff in yeah. your place. And you do put these things in these places and you, you could lose track of like what what's real in, in this. Like what, what, what did my apartment even look like at, at one point? Well, here's here's what I got from the show Hoarders that I saw an episode. And at first I was laughing at it. You know, like everybody is, and like it's interesting. And then I realized, like, so many of their details were just like me, like the emotional attachment to objects, oh, right? Um, and then also it was between that, like, I was trying to get rid of those two couches for like a year and a half, which are really cool. I get rid of everything in this place before I got rid of those two couches. Well, I was just because I, I had a, of, I, I get rid of, I had a better couch. couch. Yeah. Well, that those was the problem. Cool. They were they were given to me by Mitzi Shore, the owner of the comedy store. They look yeah. cool. They look. If they, I mean, even I, if I didn't know that they yeah, were from antique-y. Mitzi, if you're like, hey, what do you think about the look of these two couches? I'd be like, those look sweet. And then you tell me that you know the owner of the comedy store. Cool. Yeah, I offered them to you once before you moved in there, and you were yeah, like, the only you were the one I thought would want it. To have couches, though, I would need a uh, piece of real estate to put them Place. in. Yeah. So yeah, that's what you said the first time before yeah, you live where you yeah. live now. You were like, I have nowhere to put them. But I've had people. I offer to take one, and I'm like, no, they're set. They got to remain together, and so I turn them down. That's great. Look at look at how cool they are. You're no, they're very cool. Right. I didn't think we'd find room for them. If Thank you, you very much. If you would have split room. those up, they would have been like they would have just. They would, neither one would be here right now. Yeah, they would have missed each other so much. The other one would have killed itself. But here's the problem: they were giving me my Mitzi, but it's not like Mitzi built the comedy store around these couches. It's something she bought seven years ago. Or seven years before she gave it to me, and then she's like, oh, I don't want these anymore. Or you take them. Or whatever it was. It wasn't like she had any emotional attachment to them. She was like, I'm dumping these. Hey, uh, oh, phone guy. Oh, I see what you you're want saying. these? As and you walk by it randomly. Like they were custom made by her, and she still was able yeah, to get rid of them. Yeah, I think we added a lot. Yeah, that's what I did too. Yeah. In my head. But it's like, they're just fucking couches. Yeah. They were yeah. in the video room for the longest time. And she was like, I get, I was like do you want these? I was like, yeah. She's like, well, get them out today or I'm tossing them. They, I mean, Sammy got, might have got them before the divorce, too. Yeah, I Sammy might have fucked in those couches. We don't know what era these couches of Mitzi Shore's life they came from. Mitzi might have fucked on one of these couches. Ooh, shit. Maybe, which is kind of cool. But, I mean, so also, Polly Shore might have <laughs> peed on one of these couches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> might have picked his nose and wiped it on there. He loves doing oh, that. he definitely did that. There's something. You know, I mean, if he was a little the baby, like... Polly. They were, they were, yeah, I have no idea when she got them. And now she doesn't either. 
Oh, wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> she has Alzheimer's. Anyway. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. So I had those things. I had the fucking luggage by the door. Yeah. I had this couch, this new couch that was given to me that's long enough I can sleep on. The old Mitzi couches aren't long enough to sleep on. And they have hard sides, so you can't really. Oh, yeah. All right, and you also had a layer of dust and dust bunnies that looks like somebody put 40 kittens in but... a blender and threw the remnants all around the room across the room. Oh, my God. Blended that was kitties. Out of control. So it's a mixture between. Un- un- it looked like un- there had been a kitten milkshake convention <laughs> inside your living room. <laughs> and yeah, during... you had enough dust to make a whole cat. Well, that's not hardwood floors. Dust just builds. You got to keep cleaning it like every year. It's really lame. Well, it builds. I think most people would say every week. <laughs> it builds if you just keep letting stuff sit. And I've you never swept. Anything. By the way, look at Mitzi's couches now. Yeah, like, they, look at what's already. They right. never There's made a printer their way on that couch. Where is the printer? Oh, isn't it underneath that? No, no, it's just quartz. Oh. No, no, there's no you printer. Got, well, you got the a ton only, of shit on that. The couch. only things that have been that sitting be on, on there. Those, and by there's the way, a hanger on there. All that stuff was there when we left. Yeah, it. this was. You guys were like, all right, we're pretty much done. Oh, well, wow, that's where I we mean, walked yeah, out. It was at? so easy. Yeah. That's when you said. I mean, because oh, I look got at it the, from here, guys. If yeah. you look at the bottom of everything, it's all stuff that only you could get rid of. That one there is loaded with your mail and stuff and yeah, paperwork. Yeah. Over here to the right. Uh huh. Oh, so that, you'd yeah. have to decide what you wanted to throw away. So we left that stuff for you. Uh huh. And then look what you did. And you then just I blocked let it. it sit there. You blocked it I off. I blocked it with the with the pot holder, where I put my marijuana and stuff. A TV tray. A TV wow. tray. And then once I blocked it, so here's what I do too. It's half emotional attachment and half laziness. So once I block something, if that if that TV tray was the emotional attachment, whatever's behind there. That's just laziness. I'm never going to get to. I told you to get rid of the TV trays, Jesus. by the way. And but then what l- am I eating on? You've done. You what? keep saying, what do I eat on? You eat here's, on a here's... fucking plate like a human On being. your lap? Sure, man. You're at home. Look, you got your TV, your couch. I know. That's why you put a TV what tray. What do you need to do? Like sit here like a baby? And no, like, you put a Cut fucking, your food before you... You put a fucking t- plate you chew on, it a, on a table. Do you chew it 50 bites and everything, too? What if it's like soup or spaghetti? I can't understand. How often do you eat pizza. soup and spaghetti here? All the time. Really? I had soup last night. That's, those are your two favorite meals in this household. That's the hoarder's delight. That was too? the poverty. That was the poverty. <laughs> when I was super poor, super I I realized poverty. that I couldn't afford any food really. But pasta was so cheap. Oh yeah, I just found that. So out I would actually. load up on pasta and marinara sauce. Oh, it's so good. And if I could find some mar- uh, Parmesan cheese on sale, I would get like forty of those. Yeah. And that's all I would. And eat. then you would keep them. Yeah, there's a little trick because they never go bad. Right. They never go bad. So you don't have to shop again for like years. It's pretty great. <laughs> oh man, I hate shopping. <clears throat> anyway, so I had this couch, this new couch I got, in front of the old couches. Yeah, that was another telltale sign that we were in for uh, quite the experience. Oh my god, back to back is never a good front sign. Front to back, oh it was just blocking worse. off access to oh Mitzi's couch, god. just blocking it off. So I had less. There space. wasn't even anywhere to walk around in here when we first got in here. What do you mean? I had pathways. Yeah, you only know the pathways, sorry. It looks like a bunch of yeah. shit to us. Dude. Oh, really? You yeah, you, you recognize the yeah. path. You, you made would, them. You yeah. would bounce through there like you're some kind of like you're... spider in a web, and we're like, well, we don't know how to get over there. Yeah, you want us to like trailblaze to your kitchen. Right. You were like Indiana Jones crossing one of those wooden drawbridges <laughs> that connect two cliffs to the other, and we're like, hey, man, there's no bridge. Uh so when did we, also, what did we, we just started throwing big stuff away? Well, yeah, we started throwing big stuff away. But first, we, we all procrastinated and just said, let's go through the CDs. Oh, uh, that was well, that the looks, biggest that, mistake. I mean, well, yeah, that was took a day. Everything else didn't make sense. The only thing we could recognize as a thing was the CDs. Well, Tony started. It was like, okay, we need to throw something away. They're like, yeah. let's look around. What can we throw away? And like, there's two like um, holders for CDs, oh. for CD jackets and stuff. And they're like, okay. Or do you listen to CDs at all anymore? I was like, no, we can probably get rid of those. But my CDs are all in this fucking book, like hundreds of them. So we should take these to Amoeba, but we got to figure out which CDs are where. They're not in alphabetical order in the book. So there's hundreds in the book and hundreds in the cases and... Hundreds all over the floor. I mean, they were... They're literally everywhere. And in my car, too. We just had to match them up. Oh, in your car. There's a ton in your car. That's yeah. right. We just had your, to... ho- your car's even hoarded right now. Yeah, yeah your yeah. glove it's compartment's hoarded. packed. Yeah, I got some stuff in there. It should be. This is what He's I got realized actual now. Gloves should be in my glove compartment. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take some gloves to Baltimore. Six pairs. Uh, who, who else carries actual gloves in the glove compartment? <laughs> I should have <laughs> registration, um, the owner's manual, mm-hmm. insurance, and some pot. And a couch. 
No, no, no. Nope, nope. See, that was a test. Very good. <laughs> no couch, no couch in the dog environment. <laughs> so, yeah, to so make sure much, that you're learning through pretty some much of this. all day long. We just sat there super high off that off that vaporizer and just matched up um, uh, CD case jackets to CDs. That was one of the most tedious. I mean, so tedious. Twenty minutes in, I'm like, "This is great. We're going to be done in no time." And then two hours later, I'm like, my fucking head's about to explode. Well, you guys were on well, I, fucking... The first day, I had to figure everything out, dude, because it was out of control. Yeah, it was. Here's the thing. There was so so much shit on the floor that I didn't know what w- was stuff I couldn't step on. But I knew. But you knew. I knew. So you could just walk on all your shit, and I'm like trying to recognize you're, you're, you're the certain things to, that Yeah, you're that trying not to walk. Like I'm like, dude, just step on that. On. It's trash. What's wrong with you? It's fine. That's what you're supposed to walk. And you're like, like I don't know. The thing next to it also looks like trash. And those but that's albums an were from a we- weird era too. Those CDs, by the way, they were from the nineties. I was seeing, early I 90s. Was seeing <laughs> like weird nineties band CDs that I didn't oh even know existed. Yeah, that was there was that like was the nineties. I didn't think that, that was Alika Joe. I didn't think you two had that many albums. Oh, you two has got a lot of albums. Until I was oh my God, slipping radio, on man. them on your floor. Well, here's the thing. Here's when I got all my CDs. I worked at the at University of Maryland for, to pay for college. I worked at the North Hills service desk. Um, it was just this place where people, if they locked themselves out of their rooms, they would go up there and they would ask for a spare key. We would give it to them. They'd sign it out. They'd give it back to us. Uh, if they got a package, they would come there to get it. They'd, we'd, have, we'd have to just call them say, hey, because it's too big for their mailboxes. So it's like, hey, your package is here. Come and get it. Wow. And they would. Or if people needed a phone number, they would call us. Stuff like that. So we figured out that we were the ones logging in the packages. So we can just order BMG and Columbia House to um, closets. Or to bathrooms, places that don't exist, mm. and they would come deliver it. And we were the ones in charge of like calling the, the students to say come pick. So we just wouldn't do it. So if there's a package for for room 101, which is the first bathroom, and it's like um, who's we just look at each other like who's Anne Arundel, and someone would be like, yep, yeah, that's me, that's my package. Who's who's Mrs. Fields? Like I'm Mrs. Fields, thank you. And we would just remember like the fake name we put it under, and we got tons of free music wow. with no repercussions. Wow. And actually, until we all got fired for getting caught for doing that. <laughs> I, guess, I guess one repercussion. Uh, there was one. <laughs> there was one. But any time I heard a, song, a band that had one hit on the radio, I'm like, getting that album. If oh, I liked yeah. it. Oh, I could tell, get man. Get the other you, three they've made. You had Chumbawamba. Chumbawamba, yeah. You had that in there. I knew yeah. I was going to find that eventually, Yeah, too. you found it. When I found it, it was like the second day in. I was like, oh, I there you are. down, man. I get up again. <laughs> we meet again. <laughs> you had Jock Jams, too. You had the Space Jam soundtrack. You had it. I did not have Space Jam soundtrack. <laughs> did I? That was, maybe that was from my... Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I did have Jock Jams, although I'm trying to remember. I don't think that was one I ordered from... I think I might have stolen that from somebody. I think I did. How it. much did you end up getting when we took that down to uh, me? One hundred and twenty dollars. See, that was that was good for your spirit, though. That was good. By you, the way, you but you I were... end up having to give you each forty of it, so so I we each split it. Yeah. So the first day was for nothing. We each got yeah. forty bucks that, from that first true. day's work. But we, we, I remember how bad I needed that money then. Oh, so yeah. it actually oh, it was, helped a lot. It was down yeah. to the wire. Yeah. Great yeah. timing on that. Great really timing great. to take care of your hoarding, man. Yeah. yeah. We were both starving. <laughs> I was starving. That's the good thing about the comedy store is you could always find people that are poor enough. Um, sort of uh, white Mexicans. Um, so they'll just do things. Yeah. Like if, if, you, if you belong, the comedy store will keep you alive. Rogan had a nice, a brand new like, um, like classic car that he, they, they redid for some like TV show. One of those mm-hmm. like redo cars TV shows. So he didn't want it. It was like spotless and like some beautiful, I don't know, old cars. But he would pay uh, Fat James 100 bucks to watch his car in the lot and make sure nobody hit it or anything. And, and he, would just, he just sat out there with a chair. Wow. And just got one of those extreme gulps and a pack of cigarettes. And he just sat there at the corner of his car all that long for 100 bucks. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. I was, I was way just... easier than what you guys did for the same hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like how you passed on the traditions of Joe Rogan. But I made like it way more a work. Slave on your hand, on our hands and knees. Well, and I did hire two that... of you. <laughs> I thought I needed one. Actually, so are you saying that our combined weight makes us like Fat James? <laughs> Man, I Not guess even. you guys are probably thinner than him. Like yeah. Fat James' leg. So yeah, I had these passageways set up where I could walk in and out of. So I had this this couch blocking the other couch, so mm-hmm. I could use this nice new couch. The other couch had uh, clean laundry on it, just piles of clean laundry. There were islands. Oh, my God. Well, actually, there was also dirty laundry, remember? There was like – this was a pile of dirty laundry, but the oh, yeah. rest was clean. But 
it was all. Yeah, I knew which one was which. Like piles. I of knew clothes. which was which. It looked like one big pile. Of That's clothes. why the CDs. Eventually, I had to go on actual CD duty and not jewel case duty because the CDs themselves. Did you say jewel case duty? I did not say that. I said jewel case. <laughs> Jewel? You keep hearing Jew, but I keep saying Jewel. What are the first three letters of Jewel? It's J E W. Like Jew? Like Jew. Exactly like Jew. What did your dad do for a living? He was a jeweler for a while. Oh, he was into jewels too. (laughs) Yeah. And he was a Jew. And he was a Jew. What a coincidence. He still is a Jew. I bet he (laughs) still is a jeweler. What? What? How Jewish is that that your dad's a jeweler? Uh, Oh, where uh, are the jewels uh, today? I sure do hope somebody brings in some rubies. <laughs> all right, sorry. Back to your hoarding. That's all right. Off of my hey, Matt, racism and back Matt, to your hoarding. Favor, if you shift your head, you can also shift your hand. It's hard, I know. So I, you get used to doing oh, this, I'm doing that. Like, all right. It's okay. I'm only used to being on stage holding them. I know, like well, you this. can hear it. That's the only small difference. I'm having, like, the only issues I have with sound here is when people just, like, start taking the mic further and further away from their face. Uh, who would do that? Quick. But you I'm just don't hear it. You don't have a monitor. You just did it. You just no, I mean, I, your head. Looked, I looked around. That's a, that, I slipped into a, a, an old habit, a regular habit that I go on every You do that on stage? Before. Yeah. Where you turn to the side and then keep talking? Well, when I... Sure. Oh, wow. But you can oh, hear it, it if the there. sound drops. Yeah, out. I mean, it doesn't go that far away, and it's it's a mic'd up room, but, you know. Yeah. I could see why that I could see why that would mess up on a podcast. That's why people I wear headphones on podcasts, podcast usually, but I hate them like because this. it fucking hurt my ears. All right, so back to – we finished with the jewel cases. Yes. <laughs> I know Sorry I got a little confused. I went off on a tangent. I wouldn't say confused as much as I would say excited to be able I to say Jew really excited. seven times in a row. Yeah. right. That That's took us exactly. way off. That was just like when we were working. Yeah. yeah. Like we'd find one thing that has nothing to do with cleaning and – First of all, about the gravity bunk. Should I break it out right now? Oh. Fuck yeah. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, why wouldn't we, right? To well, how, did they, how do you do this on podcast? Do we well, take here's a commercial the break or here's something? The <laughs> I, this one I can put on pause since it's not live or That's anything. That's so cool. Or you guys can keep talking while I load it up. Yeah, just do that. Do the keep Come talking? On. Well, I mean... Well, we, let's think about it. What would you like to do? <laughs> why don't we just pause it and since it's not live? Yeah, all right. Matt, well, I think we're, say, I think Matt? we're, I think well, we're I mean, a little bit too excited about what's going. I mean, this is show business. Yeah, you know, when you're having a production, yeah. you can pause it and save film uh-huh. and audio you just for the that. editors. You uh-huh. just do it. My, uh, the, I could smoke a I, cigarette. The first time you could pack that thing, we could come it's back. A fifteen foot cord. You can go outside and smoke a cigarette anywhere. Are you serious? Yeah, I love that one's this fifteen studio. foot cord. You just have to switch. Ooh. Yeah, I bought extra long ones so I could take them like outside. You don't have to sit near each other. That's really cool, man. You could do them from three rows back on a plane. Really? You could have a cord draping along wow. the, the bottom. And, and everybody I could, could talk just to you. do their thing. Yeah, and just talk. But then actually, how would you hear them? Headphones. Really long headphones. No, but the headphones wouldn't let you, I, I guess, like get a splitter. No, yeah. you wouldn't both be able to hit the headphones. That's the problem. Oh, a splitter would have to work on that. Splitter, a headphone splitter, and get that cord draping could, along, too. Yeah, that could work. Now that we know that, we could figure out some creepy podcast that would be awesome, like yeah. reporting from both sides of something. No, let's do this. How about we go, oh, yeah, for both sides. Of, yeah. Mm. This section, the USC section is great. <laughs> Visitor section is kind of lame. <laughs> We're here with our handy recorder, H4N. Uh, yeah. I'm here. I'm How's here. It looking over there? All I'm right. here wearing a, wearing a uh, San Francisco uh, Giants jersey in Dodger Stadium. Um, Ari's chilling behind me about oh, a that's mile away. so funny. Uh, <laughs> that actually he's wearing Dodger really stuff good. and saying, get him. <laughs> that'd be great. If you were wearing a headset and you just had people around you, and you're like, is anybody coming? Anybody coming? Mm. Right. You know what we could do? We could just do silent heckles um, from a comedy club as someone's on stage. Oh, oh wow. God. That's a really And you would hear one. like audio from around. Right. So you could get what they're saying. And, and, then, you, and then just, you don't have to disrupt their set, but like, yeah, that's what I would do too if I was a piece of shit. Oh. Yeah. Just like light In the right. back of the main room? Yeah, where no one could hear. Yeah. yeah. Dude, Renazisi and I used to go to the main room and watch Fat Tuesday. Fat Tuesday's Black Knight. Oh. oh. And um, the best joke ever was. was uh, Black people don't listen to podcasts, right? So we're not. No, they're not. They're not aware of this. The, uh, yeah, very, very, very few. They're not aware of the technology. Yet. Okay. What'd you guys do? Um, uh, we would go and listen, and it was one we couldn't even understand what they were saying. Like their their black accents were so thick, but it's not that we didn't think it was funny because everyone would laugh at the same time. So clearly they were all tuned into something. But you just hear these comments going, "And I want what about 
boop, boop, yeah. And then they'd, then they'd point the, the mic out to the crowd, and the whole crowd would go, one time? Or something like that. What? And God. you'd be like, what is going it's on? Like completely connected. Completely different. But they all wow. understand what they're doing. Wow. I'm t- that's they're, the black race, man. I'm telling yeah. you. They're like, I don't think they, they – I think they could talk with their minds. Some of the uh, – Chris Spencer sounds just like I do. They're like dolphins. Like they speak yeah, to each other. Yeah, their own language. Yeah. They're like they're, animals. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now Big, we're pushing into well, that zone. Oh. That's one of those words. That's one of those hot button words. <laughs> See that on Discovery. <laughs> Dolphins seemed okay. Any sort of when you say animals uh, or any so, and any sort of the monkey so that's family. That's where the line is. That's Dolphins line. and animals. No, you could say dolphins. All right, then they're dolphins. But if you say, dolphins are beautiful. If you say animals at all, that's bad. Or if you say any sort of monkey. Ugh. What uh, about an ape? Any sort of ape. All those things that look like hum- those Ugh. things you can't say either. But I mean. So you could say like they like dolphins or butterflies. That's the N word so bad just then. Oh, yeah, oh what about? <laughs> <laughs> I should have just said it, not even thought about it. Sometimes dropping that N word is so harsh that it's like the perfect joke because it's the it's the harshest thing you can oh, say. Yeah. It would have been perfect right then. We could have easily edited it out. I, can, Kirk I can't Fox, say a Kirk, about... not Kirk Fox. Kurt Metzger explained this mm-hmm. to me once when he goes, "The reason people get so upset when you use the N word or say something about rape or something on stage." And they're like, well, you're just insensitive. That's why you're saying it. Mm-hmm. And his response is, no, no, no. We're so sensitive that we realize this is the harshest word we could possibly use because mm-hmm. we're so sensitive to those things. So that's why we're using it because mm-hmm. we want to completely like go over the top on something. And oh, we yeah. know what hits us the hardest. Oh, yeah. It's easy. Yeah. Kike is not as bad. What, it's just what, not as bad a word. Oh, than, than the N word? Yeah. Oh, that's true. I mean, it's supposed to do the same thing, but it's just not as harsh. Oh, yeah. I'm sensitive that's why to that. I, that's why I just, just call Jews the N-word every chance I get. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, with the best I ever said the N-word, the best I ever heard it said was Red Fox on uh, an episode of Sanford and Sons. It was one of my favorite old shows. Um, but there was somebody who came to, to, to find um, uh, Sanford and said that Lamont was his son and not Sanford's son, not Red Fox's son. And he was like, what are you talking about? And the way they said it was, he, this guy got home when, when Red was in the army, uh, or in Sanford, when Fred Sanford was in the army, the character, this guy was with him, and he came home from the army, this other guy too, and snuck up to Elizabeth's, Elizabeth's room and boned her. And then that was, he did the math, and that was, you know, Lamont's around when Lamont, you know, nine that months was before Lamont line? was there. Yeah. And here's the deal. So then... The, the girl that um, Fred Sanford um, always fought with, Elizabeth's sister, mm-hmm. his sister-in-law that he always like went toe-to-toe with all the time, she loved Elizabeth too. They, they connected on that. They both loved her sister and his ex-wife that died. And so that guy told him. It turned out he had actually boned the sister. He didn't know. So it was Sanford's son? No, it wasn't Sanford's son at all. It was So the name of the show should have been Sanford and some other guy's son? No, no, but it was Sanford's son in the end, so it was fine. But this guy had boned the sister. It's a great Elizabeth. story. Line. I know it's going yeah. on. But anyway, That's here's the deal. Way ahead of its time. So he told the sister. He told the sister what had happened. You know that I that I had sex with your sister because I had sex with Elizabeth, and she goes, "You." It was one black girl to one black guy, oh and she God. heard that the, what this guy was saying about his sister, about her sister, and she goes, "You nigger," like so harsh, and I was like, "Oh my, oh my God. God!" A black woman to a black. I've never heard it said that harsh ever in my life. Wow, she Can meant we, it. Yeah, wow. it's, it's like I she meant see it. that she on like YouTube or something. You know what I'll do at this point in the thing? What are we, 33 minutes in? Um, I'll, I'll try to see if I can download that on YouTube. Wow, that'd, oh, be, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, and then put it in there. That was on Sanford and Sons? It was on Sanford. This was like 19 what? Wow. Late 70s, early 80s? It drives me crazy that we don't get to have as many good things on TV as we used to. You yeah. You see the first couple, S- first couple episodes of Saturday Night Live? Oh, the way back. Yeah, it was yeah. harsh. They went, they it went, was like, amazing. Solid. They went for it. It was like what we should, what people should be doing today. It's edgy and exciting. And it's like, hey, I'm going to tune in next week to see what could happen. I don't want to miss what could happen. Yeah. I know it's not going to be maybe – I know it's not going to be safe. Other oh, planes. Yeah. Safe. Yeah, you don't uh, know what's, what they're going to make. Uh, now it's like let's make so a couple jokes about New York. They and got, it helps the ratings. They could do yeah. whatever they want. You know I don't know. I mean? they could, maybe they it could hurts be the so funny. Mm-mm. Maybe it helps the ratings with someone like you or me, but with most people, like Mm-mm. they want something generic. Here's what it is: is that in the tough times, they're like, we don't want to lose our advertisers because they're giving us money. 
But what they don't realize is that if they took a chance, they get more viewers, and then they yeah, get more different viewers. advertisers yeah. that are better advertisers. Something like so. Seinfeld, they're like, oh, this is clearly better than the other shows. Yep. South Park, oh, this is clearly better than the other shows. It's a step above. Yep. And so you watch those, and you're like, oh, the viewers will keep coming, mm-hmm. and the advertisers will eventually be like, no, I don't care. But for a while, advertisers, they pulled advertisements from Ellen's. She had a sitcom when she came out of the closet. I don't know if you guys remember that. She yeah. came out of the closet in real life. Oh, no, her character came out of the closet. And Nabisco and all these people were like, no, we can't be a part of that. Oh, wow. Yeah. That wouldn't happen now. Actually, she was kind of groundbreaking for doing that, knowing what would happen. She did it anyway. Yeah. Nib- Nabisco wasn't into uh, her. Her character coming out. Yeah. Being <laughs> a different choice. Like, that's not with, family. What's wrong with Nabisco? They were retards back <laughs> they were then. All, they were actually. They, they were. were what? They were. Uh, there are a bunch of N-words <laughs> that's what you're going to say. <laughs> I was going to make a Nabisco joke like they were they were losing their crackers over it or something. Oh, that's what you're going to go there? No, but I, did, but I didn't go there. Okay. Because <laughs> it was bad. Uh, all right, you know what? I'm going to put this on pause. I'm going to throw up the gravity bong. Yes. Hold. And we're out. Commercial break. Oh, no. Dun, dun. And we're back. And it's like no time passed. Wow. That was so fast. You had a cigarette. Did you? Yeah. You had a cigarette. Yeah. We smoked three fucking times from the gravity bong. What a great commercial break. Yeah. I don't think they do that on The Tonight Show. If they did on The Tonight Show, what do they go, we'll be right back. Hey, thanks for thanks for staying with us, everybody. Yeah. And like immediately came back like that. That Yeah, I'd watch more often. Yeah. Time watch is maybe relevant. a couple times a year. Mm-hmm. Actually, that's how I watch all my TV now because I download TV like off the internet. I just steal it. Um, and it just goes fade to black, come right back in. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so where were we? Uh, we were uh, well, talking about... That was about, actually a while ago. Do you remember? We were, talk, <laughs> we were talking about how you had your own pathway and how we just started throwing stuff away. So I think one of the... Well, we maybe... I think one of the things that really got things kicked off was we just started filling up the dumpster with big stuff. Well, after the first day, the dumpster was... All, mm. it, yeah, we filled it up. Yeah. We filled it up mm-hmm. twice, Quick, really. Oh, Do you remember what we filled it up with first? Yeah, well, you were like, that white thing? Oh, Yeah. Was it that white thing? Or was well, it the that stuff was outside? one of the last things. Was it the? Well, the couch was one of the first things. We got rid of a couch right away, right? What couch? No. What? What other couch was here? There were two couches. The one you're sitting on was in front that of that one, one and oh. that one was off over there somewhere. Oh man! And this was just this nice one, this awesome lazy oh, boy. Yeah, that was, was just buried off, back buried there. by the door area. So it's not the even really pile. a good sign when we filled up a dumpster a few times and we can't name anything but a small thing of outside, white shelves outside, that all collapsed, we had chest by of the way. The credenza. We had the credenza. Oh, you love that credenza. <laughs> I love oh the credenza. Oh, my God, the credenza. <laughs> if there's one thing that I happened even, that I, I learned about. I credenza was until I came. Oh, yeah. A credenza. A <laughs> you were piece like, of... say bookcase, say fucking oh, <laughs> drawers, whatever it was. Where did you he- first hear the I word credenza? Because I if know. I've never heard of it, I'm pretty Can mainstream. I'm pretty. Do, do you want to know where I heard it from? Like the where? first time I ever heard it? Where? It's a whole different thing than what it really was. What was it? A credenza. All right. Do you remember Perry Saturn, the pro wrestler? Wow. I, All right. I love when white trash people say white trash <laughs> things. Go ahead, trash. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Perry oh Saturn. Uh, he used to be at WCW, but when he went over to WWF, uh, he, he had to create like kind of a new persona, and he came up with this new finisher called the Three-Handed Family Credenza. The Three-Handed it, it ha- Family Credenza. There's something three-family, okay. but the end, the la- it, was cr- it ended with Credenza. Family? The word family was in there. I know that. Wow. At least it could have just – I mean family and Credenza – Somebody who knows. Guys. Somebody knows the answer to this. Matt Edgar on Twitter. M A T. Yeah. What the hell E-G-G-A-R. was that move? If anybody knows out there. Okay. There's no other way I could find out. Okay. So go ahead. And so that's what I thought. And what was what was that move? Was. It was crazy, man. It Are was, you looking I, up the word credenza right now? How do you spell it? C R. I definitely know that. <laughs> of course. And you I do. definitely know it's either credenzas. an E or an A, but I think an E. D E N Z A. That's what I'm going to say. C R E D E N Z A. Maybe C. That's what I have it as too. And what is this doing? It's, re- it's requesting the website. Oh, I don't have service here. Oh. Anyway. Yeah. The three fingered family credenza sounds like an awesome okay. move. I mean, the move is pretty. I couldn't believe he came up with it then because it was like that guy already he made a lot of cool moves throughout his career. 
And that was like later on in it. He still had it in what him. What was the move? Do you remember? It kind of looked like a suplex, but he didn't like. Oh, you know what it looked like? Oh my was... god, I found it. Ready for this? Oh, what's it called? With the most long name of finishers. Ready for this? Oh my god. Drop it. The yeah, moss. Right the moss covered. The moss covered. Listen to me. <laughs> like moss that grows on trees. Yeah. All right. So check this out. Perry Saturn. I'm so glad you brought this up. What an amazing tangent. <laughs> yeah. So Perry Saturn wrestler <laughs> one had a finisher. Good for is tangents. Yeah. He had three finishing moves. The most long name of them all is what it says before it for some reason, which is already a telltale sign. Yeah. Oh, man. The moss covered three handled oh, family so credenza. <laughs> oh, my God. Three handled family credenza. Oh, I'm move? telling you, man. Oh, I, dude, it's got to be amazing. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I know wrestling so well. I love wrestling. Yeah. And I, I think it's such a huge part of so much of awesome entertainment. Oh, yeah. And I got to tell really you right now, art. every single thing that my history with wrestling would tell me, and I've paid a lot of attention, I'm just going off the name. Yeah. This has to be. A fucking somewhat it's very Perry Saturn. Diabol- and Perry Saturn was great. He was great. great. I By love the way, Perry, Perry Saturn. Saturn, if you're wondering, Ari, I don't know how much you know about this. Perry yeah, Saturn. I don't know is, much about okay, this. Okay, well, let me my, tell you. Air, but yeah. Let me tell you, because this is an interesting fun fact that I sort of just thought of right now. handled what? The moss covered three handled okay, family okay. credenza. There's no way that shit's popping up on YouTube. The mo- so we're, so, we're into the moss so far on YouTube, but it hasn't said anything. The moss covered? Yeah, do moss. Three handle family. family. No way! Oh my <laughs> Spell credenza weird there too. Click on it. Credenza. Uh, well, Saturn wasn't really good at spelling. <laughs> well, that's that's weird because on this it actually spells it the way that I spelled it. Which is what, dude? It has okay. it. Okay. Oh, here we go. Oh my god. Okay, we're we're about to watch no three way. Perry Saturn finishes. No right fucking way. God, okay. Well, let me tell you what I was gonna say real quick and then hold that yeah. thought. Yeah. 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 Ari, what's weird about Perry Saturn is that if there was a UFC fighter. That was a wrestler that yeah. was in wrestling. Yeah, it would be him. Do you know what I mean? In, well, in the way that, like, his character was basically just a really badass guy that was extremely technical well, you know, and well trained. You know, his moves extremely were extremely technical and well trained. He actually went through many different like character types too. <laughs> At one point, he was dressed up like a woman. Like he had like a dress, and he'd go out there and he uh he did that the dvd oh, from the shit. death you valley driver thing? i love that man i can't wait to have a place that has that i'm so looking forward to that oh well, oh my god that's great yeah. this is how you live ari oh yeah you can just man. put it on your screen that's TV. So, like, so i download all my shit on the on the on there on the computer and i just play wait, it i could do that through my TV. playstation 3 right uh wait, wait. Well, i don't know about that i don't know how to do i want to see this so There's bad a YouTube right now option on it my head's about to explode so go you operate that thing which which oh, one do you yeah. want to click on? I am not the guy to operate this thing. Okay, but look no, th- look this way. Look look this way. There's the there's the mouse button. Got it. Okay. okay. So click on one. Oh I my hold it to the TV. Harry Saturn finishers. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> the moss covered three handled family credenza. We get boom. Oh fuck! He's got him. That's already it. It's wow. over. Was that was it. Say, oh here, Death DVD Valley Drive. right here. Jericho. Oh, oh, oh. fuck. Rings the of rings Saturn. Are, yeah. What a great submission. Perry Saturn. Yep. Look at this. Oh. Over. Too much leverage. Turn it. Go, rewind. I want to see the family credenza again. Dude, the credenza is amazing. It's a. It's almost like a sideways perfect Dude, he was flex. so underrated, Harry man. Saturn finishes. Harry Saturn was, he wearing was jeans so too? underrated. Was he wearing jeans? Yeah, he wore jeans a lot. Wow. I, Very I can't hard figure to out do. how this isn't working here. Oh, right. move, just move it right. Okay, there, there it is. Okay, oh. Now go to wherever one you did or refresh. or whatever. Okay. This is it. The moss-covered three-handled family credenza. Looks like a fisherman suplex. Oh, how does he? How does he do that? Oh, so he's on his back and pinning him. Yeah. All right, pause that. Wow, he's on his back. He. T- oh, wow, that's weird. Straight into it's a pin. It's kind of like the. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like the perfect plex. Except but it was he sideways. Just cor- yeah. Well, anyway, I mean, that's pretty, he just that's spins pretty clever. Him. You know, it's very clever. And it pins him right there. And As if he was holding. That's the why. Like that's why pro wrestling's such an art, man. You it have really these guys is. out there yeah. making this new shit, and you can see where it started. They're. 
I mean, it's this evolved. Is what, this is what it actually means. It's a noun, a sideboard, or a cupboard. What? That's what a credenza really is. Sideboard or a cupboard. Yeah. Right. Oh, wow. So which God, basically where did, means Where did that, Saturn get that? I don't know. From Saturn. Which really reaffirms that that was not a credenza. There wasn't a credenza. It was a bookcase. <laughs> and a, and a, and a, just a, I like Saturn's credenza more than yours. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I'm definitely not using the right word. But. If, I had, if I had my choice between carrying whatever you thought was a credenza out or in getting slammed by Perry by the, Saturn, by I, would take, covered. I would take my beating. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so... All right. So we did all those. By the way, I sold all my, what's it called? My uh, DVDs after I did the, the, the CDs. Mm-hmm. And I realized, like, if I had done this four years ago, five years ago, when I stopped listening to the CDs, maybe even longer, would have made a lot more money than $120. So I was like, let me get the DVDs right now and just get rid of them. All those DVDs, they offered me eight bucks. <laughs> and I'm like, I'd rather give them to Boon Chakalaka. Oh, wow. Wow. How many DVDs did you have? Like 30, but they were like unopened boxes, like Simpsons, whole seasons. There were some good things in there. And they're like, yeah, we just don't. We what? Those places are scam artists. Yeah. Well, she goes like, honestly, we have to, a like, lot of these sell right things now. at uh, GameStop. You're allowed to say no. And by the way, of the stuff that they took from me, the CDs, I gave the rest to Boone because they weren't going to take them. Uh, he took them down there and got another ten dollars. Oh, wow. They looked through them again. We're like, yes, well, we will take some oh of these. God. I was so thinking that when we got, took those because they went CDs so fast. So like, uh, yes, at, no, at that than yes, you. no. They're just guessing real and fast. If, and if some, yeah, and if somebody went there the next day, even with that bag of stuff that we get, that they gave you back on the uh, CDs, mm-hmm. I guarantee you. It if somebody like, went to the same guy five minutes later, right? He would have taken some and not taken some. Yeah. Would have been different. He's going mm-hmm. so fast. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so we did that. We got to get back on track. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> God, to Saturn really. Uh, this podcast yeah, is full great. of. Uh, now I want to watch finishers. <laughs> that's oh, all you want. Just looks great. But, by the way, if you want to look at it up, it's Perry Saturn dash finishers yeah. three. Saturn, if you're listening out there, you Give did great, you, man. man. Completely underrated. We love. I you. would have liked to have seen that. Seen that. Um, uh, would... <laughs> the moss cover three handled uh, credenza uh, at WrestleMania. Pinning... Well, no, in slow motion from like a couple different angles, so I could see that better. Exactly what that around, like. I, I want to know who the one asshole that disliked this video is. <laughs> one I mean, dislike. 16 likes, one dislike. You have the balls to click on a video that says Perry Saturn finishers. <laughs> they showed five was, finishers. It was three. Raven. <laughs> three Raven. of the best three finishers. finishers. That, they tell you what it was. was it, hey, wasn't Saturn in the flock? Was he part of Raven's yeah. flock? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's jealousy. What's Raven's flock? Oh, maybe he was somebody that wasn't allowed to Oh, you're flock. saying that the dislike is from Raven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that wasn't that cool. Did you see my even flow DDT? <laughs> it was just a DDT. I can't believe that you weren't into wrestling, Ari. I was into wrestling at a different time than you guys. It was like Hogan and the Four Horsemen. Yeah. Hogan, guys Junkyard guys, Dog, um, uh, Rowdy Piper the first time. Yeah. Um, uh, he's great. Slaughter, yeah, he's cool. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter, Animal, uh, George Animal Steel. Wow, man! Yes, um, how old are you? What? How old Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. And I don't know how old I was when I was watching that. You know, I could have yeah. been seven or I could have been fifteen. I have no idea. And then later, once like I remember, my brother was still into it when they had the um, the uh, Undertaker and um, the Natural. There was somebody Natural. He was just like he was coming in. Everyone was like, "Whoa, he's oh, gifted. Yeah. He's gonna change yeah. shit." Um, and I was like, I'm kind of losing it now. Yeah, I knew that, the that clear happens. Nikolai Volkov was clearly a Russian. He was a bad guy. He was done. Yeah. But those 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 archetypes in general are done. That's why Captain America yeah, sucks. I haven't... Like the they idea were of really. Like... Well, I'll tell you what they were. What is they were way ahead of their time. Well, they were reflective of of what we were thinking as a people, I guess. Right? Where we're just like oh, Russians sort of. Are evil. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah. you couldn't even Arabs get away with evil. that now. You couldn't no. get away with a. An Iraqi that actually was like, "Why would you? Why'd you kill Saddam oh, Hussein?" Yeah. So they're, yeah. they're that'd be such a that'd be stuff so right great. Now. That'd man. be such a great bad oh, guy. People would be food. like, "Fuck you! You would, you come into our country? And we didn't fucking ask you. You killed our fucking. I hate you." <laughs> Spitting. And meanwhile, they're just drinking beers with them backstage. Yeah. <laughs> That That's would be what, great if somebody dude, really stuck up for like goes to New York and just talks about 9/11. Osama bin Laden was doing <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah. He had some points. You oh my pieces God, of that'd be shit, horrible. Americans. Yeah. That would never fly. You would get killed. Those d- people are so dumb. <laughs> some of them. There would be some somebody dumb guy that'd be like, "No, yeah. I'm gonna kill that motherfucker." Yeah, let's stick. I'm gonna do. News. I'm gonna do what The Rock and John <laughs> Cena are too scared to do. I'm gonna go in there and slice this motherfucker's throat. As an American, and they were like, yeah. "Oh, guy, no." Ooh. Yeah, man. I'd, Ooh, we were just. I'd love to see a people's this, elbow on terrorism. The people's elbow. 
All right, all right. Back to this fucking hoarding. <laughs> You're gonna have fun editing this piece. <laughs> there, won't, there won't be much editing. I might just edit the stuff around where it says, uh, "Let's take a break." I think we'll nice. pull in a lot of wrestling either. fans out of this one. Yeah, too. absolutely. Maybe. <laughs> it's really brought in the audience. I have... basically the, you'll have to tell you'll have to let it be known in the title that this is a podcast about hoarding about and things. Perry Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was gonna say that. Earlier. That's what I was supposed to. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta like tag Perry Saturn in this. The Freddie Lockhart podcast. We talked about something else like completely, and then. Red Band just forgot to tag it as that other thing, but I was like, yeah, he had a good name for it too. But then he forgot. To put, but yeah, that's what I'll do for this: hoarding and, and fucking Perry. wrestling. Specifically, and Perry Saturn. Okay. Uh, well, that guy's never also, got enough credit. You know, story. Well, I mean, that's yeah. I also <laughs> think uh, there should be. I think something happened crazy with Perry Saturn recently, right? Like he died. No, don't tell me that. He's gonna die eventually. How old was this? When was this? He was, when, when was he wrestling? Perry, Perry Saturn. Saturn. You have to look up where Perry Saturn is right now, guys. Yeah, you can. Hold on, I got it already. What is it? That's way easier. The gargoyle, the Iron Horseman, Perry Saturn, five feet ten inches tall. That's how tall I am. Hundred and thirty-four. Yeah, pounds. what's his name? Um, what's his name wow, that comes in here and, and pisses himself? What's his name? Born in. Who comes to the comedy store all the time? Wrestler. Yeah. Well, not, not, Piper, not Piper, but the other one. That's uh, always screaming at people and saying, you, I humble you. Oh, my God. You're talking about the... Uh, Iron Sheik. The Iron He's Sheik. tiny. Yeah. He's tiny. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. He's like 5'8". Saturn's a notoriously shorter wrestler. Uh, 234 pounds, Cleveland, Ohio, trained by Killer Kowalski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How would you like that, to have that guy as your trainer? That'd be pretty cool. Hey, who trained you? Killer Kowalski. Get the fuck out of yeah, my face. Yeah, you're going to be something great. Isn't it amazing how you can just look up stuff that fast? Jerry Lawler. Oh, yeah. It's so great. I saw you with General Sills with you yesterday. Oh, yeah. When you were on stage, you were like, who, what's Cub and Pow mean? And who was General So? You're like, you think we would even know who, and you say it the way I say it, General So. Everyone around says chow or whatever. But, um, but so I just looked it up when he was on stage. He was a brutal um, member of the army that put down many um, rebellions. So he was known for his brutality. They also called him um, So the the Barbarian, I think, or the Brutal, something like that. Yeah, he killed uh, Chinese um, civilians, and they named uh, the chicken after him because it was diced up like he would kill other Chinese people. And that's what General So is. I wasn't paying attention that day in high school. Yeah. <laughs> um, after being shot by a firearm... Oh, Who? no. Saturn it became really? addicted to meth. Oh, no, Perry. Hold on. First of and all, don't homeless. blame it on the f- uh, getting shot. And was homeless for a few years. Oh, oh God. When, what, what years? No. 2010. Oh. De- December 2010. <laughs> he was... He was dece- oh. He claimed to now be sober and expressed interest in return to the ring. Oh, oh really? Did he express interest in getting another job? And, Wait, and getting paid to do stuff? Yeah, there's no way he could be in yeah. Wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. It was announced in September 2011. Yeah. That Saturn <laughs> was scheduled for his return match on October 15th, 2011 at the AWE Night of Legends pay-per-view show. Did it happen? Saturn won the match. <laughs> he won the <laughs> match. <laughs> oh, that's a movie right there. This has been real. Up- what was that guy's name? With the, oh, my the God. Allen. There it says. Oh, it actually explains. <laughs> Wait a second. Wikipedia has its own thing for the swinging cradle suplex, which oh, is what? The moss cover oh three. Oh, my God. They call Somebody something else? The on it. Dude, they call it what? Look at this. Look what came up. All that? Oh, my oh, a picture of The whole it. thing on oh, suplexes. Oh, because it's a type of suplex? The moss cover three-handled family? Yeah, it's a... a uh, I'll tell you right now. This is it. Swinging Fisherman. Oh, also wow. known as the Swinging Fisherman Neckbreaker and the Golden Gate family. Swing, a swinging variation of the normal Fisherman Suplex. This move sees a wrestler with their opponent in a front headlock with an ear arm draped over the shoulder, hook the opponent's near leg with their free arm, and roll over to one side, flipping the opponent over onto their neck and back. I guarantee you no one understands that. <laughs> but if they slowed it down and pl- replayed it a bunch of times, they might. Wrestling fans know. Yeah. That was a lot to yeah, understand. I mean- well, no, no I, you just you know picture it. Front headlock, swing it, swing arm, <laughs> boom. I guess Come so. On. Pop it. <laughs> I guess so. on the wall, are you? <laughs> yeah. I guess if you know it, that would make more sense. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, can we get back on fucking yeah, yeah. hoarding? All right. 
So that's what we did one day. We filled up a fucking dumpster. Here was the best thing. Well, you said I had that white thing right there, that white bookcase right there that I found on the street, or that David Taylor found on the street and gave it to me. He was like, fuck yeah, I'll take that. I just had some stuff, some more clutter on that. And I was like, let's throw this away. And you were like, you were like, it's ugly. It's gross. All right. Just throw it away. It doesn't even go with your place. It's just gross. And I was like, yeah, but I need it to put stuff on. I mean, I need something to put stuff on. And you're like, no, you don't. What do you need to put down? What are you talking about? Right. I need to put stuff on things. And, and I'm you're like, like, what stuff? What? Yeah. What would you need to put on on a on a th- table? Like yeah. what? You were and I was so like, lost, man. You, you, I was like, my keys and stuff. Like, no, put your keys by the door. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. What else? And I'm like, my um, my my checkbook. And he goes, okay. <laughs> God. So, would you put that yeah. in the drawer, man? Yeah. And I was like, okay, um, yeah. And it just sort of hit me. I was like, oh. You I don't, don't need, need to have to do stuff that. stacked everywhere. I had to accept it. Instead of fighting you, I was like, well, let me think. Maybe you're right. Maybe. Oh, maybe I don't need things. I was so convinced. I was like, no, I need to put things on stuff. I need my vaporizer on something. I need it's to be able true. to put a, a glass somewhere. But then I would have this bottle of orange juice, and I would just have it there for like three years. It would be on something, and it would just be there for years. Oh, my God, Ari. And it'd be like, why is it still there? I don't know, I'm too lazy to just throw it away. Just because I have a place to put things. I shouldn't have a place to put things. Not with my sickness. No. I don't need a place to put things. You don't. You, you know don't. who can do that? Someone with a wife that will fucking put shit away and yeah. have fucking 18th century thimbles so what I know set is up this. on a bookcase. Where, where does it come from? Where does it? What, how, how do you get to that point? I don't. I guess I know. I could see well, how you fall into okay. it. But how? Here, I, had a, be I had a girl underlying... living with me for a while. Okay. And the, the deal was I paid for this place. I paid for the rent. And she cleaned. That was our fucking situation. That's how we, we worked, which is fine. And she also stocked the freezer. And it was always really clean. And it was always really clean. And I got from a place of, before she moved in, living my own, keeping it at some level of like dirty, but like, okay, to like, oh, now I don't have to clean at all. Like, I do have to do no cleaning for, <laughs> for three years. Like, I just never have to touch anything. She was like, eventually, she was like, well, can I just, yeah, like, I don't like you leaving your stuff out. I'm like, well, I, that's what I do, so... I just clean it up. Wow. If you don't like it. But if you don't mind it, then leave it there. That's what I do. Wow. So she that's what so that's we got a, a deal. Like I'll pay for the place. Don't worry. Um but then when she left, one, she left a couple like piles of things. And two, it was like, I don't I don't clean anymore. I just haven't done it for years. This is like those old men who die right after their wives die. Yeah. Because they're like, I don't know how to make things. Do you think that was part of it? Do you think egg. you miss her? And I wasn't missing her, except I just wasn't used to cleaning at all. I just wasn't something yeah. I do. Oh yeah, I know what we we're gonna do. I was gonna put a table there so I could eat on a table there, so that's where I could eat. Your whole thing with eating is weird. I, no, I think you're weird on this one. I'm trying not to accept. Like, I don't want to eat on my lap. Maybe you would need one TV tray, yeah. and if you were to go with one TV tray, yeah, then it should be leaning up against a wall until it's time to eat what you were doing and what you, obviously you've still done is i look around and it looks like a the empire strikes pack <laughs> hoth battlefield with those walking animal things from the top they're great you have three of them here I have a fourth, and I it, they're somewhere. just stocked with crap there's a fourth over there yeah once Juice, i leave it there remote, bowl, i put lighter. stuff on it i cleaned this off before you got here because that vaporizer all, all right. that stuff had made that. its way over to this but, one <laughs> Do you see it happening again? Yeah, I see it happening again. I've already seen it twice. And I'm like, oh, shit, it's happening again. We had this place pretty clean, and I see it start to creep back in. Who's that? Pete. That's right. I'll, I'll meet him soon. I'm going to play cards with him. Oh, um, that's right. <laughs> He's got a big poker tournament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fucking coming back. Uh, yeah, I mean, look. It, well, it's I don't only been, do. uh, How long sick... has it been? A couple months. Just a couple months? You know, I mean, Maybe it's three. starting small. I, I, I really think... No, no, it's already it's already come back strong once, and I've had to, like, Ari, don't do this, and fucking take it all oh. the way back down again. Well, good. I guess just keep... Well, then that. you're starting to become aware of it. Yeah. Yeah, and I had a girl over here once, and she was like, what, why do you have all these shirts? And she, like, went through it, because it wasn't, like, clean again. And she goes, what can I throw away? And I was like, <sighs> okay, yeah, throw that shirt away. Throw that oh, shirt away. Wow. We'll get that in the giveaway it is sort of... What is that, all laundry right there? It's all laundry, yeah. And you know what I noticed also after all this? All right. I just like to – what? I know. I have to do laundry. I'm, that's the laziness part. Do you know what – That's the laziness part. You know what one of the things is? Well, one of the things of what? She was right. What? You have way too much shit. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's 
families think, don't have that much laundry. I, I, I think know. This is I a, do. Uh, if they if they didn't the if closet. they didn't wash everything, and you say you still have stuff everywhere. That's all your stuff. All that's yours. That's all. That's all mine. Yeah. That's after I've given away. Th- we five bags of clothes to Goodwill. Where were you getting stuff? Were you just taking bags from like Dice or something? No, that online. I would get T-shirts sometimes. I go to thrift stores That's and get T-shirts stuff over the that years. You buy like you. No, no. you have a history it's with like, all that it's stuff. Like, yeah, then you know you have a you had a shirt like twelve years ago and you don't have that shirt anymore. Yeah, I don't have that experience. I still have whatever shirt it was. Why? I still have it. Why? That's the problem. Why? So I don't get, know. Let's get to the bottom of this. <laughs> I man. don't know. Do you not like throwing them out? I think it's because it's because for a long time my family didn't have anything. We went from like having a lot of money to suddenly not having uh, money. You. Uh, so uh, and then I suddenly I felt I felt like I became responsible for us not having cash, and I have to be wary of like what I bought and stuff, uh, and just like make things last. Thing. Okay, that's, that's so interesting. So it's not even here we so go. much that you're just Jewy. Yeah, maybe it's, it's that. that <laughs> you there was uh, there was some trauma at one point. Yeah, we went through a period where we were, just, we were like of the upper class and went to like. You just got it all lower taken middle away. class and wow. like and living above our means to be lower middle class. Well, there it is. Yeah, and then also my dad's a Holocaust survivor, and his whole family is. So then they were always like, "You don't fucking throw shit out. Wow. You make sure everything You're lasts." Conditioned to be this way. Yeah. Maybe. Oh. Wow. And that's my where it comes from. But you know what? I also do it. My emails. I have to start like, why do I have all these emails? I just never throw any of them out. Oh yeah, well, yeah. Me Where it's either. like I should just be like, oh, I read it. Don't need to respond to it. Hoarding. Delete. That way, it won't like build up, and I won't yeah. forget to write back to the ones. Yeah, I'm like, I, I build up everything. Files on my computer. I'm out of space all the time. Old iTunes stuff. I get everything for free, so it becomes like, like all these songs. I just have. I'm like, oh, I'll never listen to this album ever. But I'm like, oh, don't throw it away. And then my my fucking iPhone is full. It's a problem. I, well, I feel like I do that too. I, I didn't think that everybody just deletes all their emails. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> there used to be in Hotmail used to have a uh, used to have a cap of how much space, so you had to delete them. Otherwise, That's it'll fill crazy. up. Crazy. I'm I'm cyber hoarding. Yeah, you're cyber hoarding. Same thing. Where you don't feel like throwing it away. That's I just and I, I feel comfortable having these things around. I have an i I, I have it, an iPhone with yeah. email on it. Yeah. And I keep it in my pocket. It's like I have just a ton of mail in my pocket. Yeah. I went through a thing to where my. One of my ex girlfriends and I, um, uh, we uh, didn't want to go we, down. We, that we path. went through an era to where <laughs> yeah, I do smile just because we know the girlfriend and you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, you're like, should I have brought no, this no. up? He smiled because no. it was like, oh fuck, where am I going? This is really, this is this is really I'm in, interesting. I'm in, I'm in. Okay, yeah, I'm in. So, because it just happened recently, cool. Yeah. I there was a big moment like a month long span of our arguing yeah and serious issues going back and forth via email for technical reasons yeah. so texts weren't going <laughs> I'm not going to say who it is just fucking say the story oh yeah i am okay. so texts weren't so imagine like texts weren't the what? texts weren't going through but you could email over your phone to the oh. other person <laughs> so you have to just check your email over right over yeah it. yeah which is pretty easy if you're a blackberry person okay and i thought you were going to say basically blackberry what happened like, Wait, yeah, what that's really that's, hard i've never even heard person. that <laughs> you had really to borrow your friend's computer <laughs> <laughs> go to the library yeah <laughs> learn how to type oh come on <laughs> <laughs> learn how to read. That's what I should have said. That's learn what I how to say. Learn how to read, not type. <laughs> but um, I noticed that you know those were there. I've been pretty bad with the email thing, but then I looked and I went through them and I re- I looked at the number of emails. Like it was like uh, yeah. you know oh like a thousand emails just from her. Yeah, <laughs> over like two oh. days. Because <laughs> your phone and, doesn't do that. In total, yeah, exactly. In total, in the box was like. 1,400. So, and I'm like, and you know what? If I just check all and keep plowing through this, yeah. I'm going to clean this artery of life real quick. <laughs> you know, and I did it. And honestly, as I was going through it, I realized, wow, I'm eliminating this part of my life completely yeah. and forever, and I'll yeah. never have it back again. And this is great. Well, that's right the thing that scares me. It's literally like, where it's life like it's cleansing. a big decision. It's life cleansing, and didn't you feel good after you did yeah, it? Yeah, I did. Well, I was like, cool. I don't need that stuff. I had this rush that came that over me that was like an adrenaline thing. Like, man, we're just living life. And that you just get rid of some parts. Those that were drawers so outside yeah. was given to me by the, uh, my girlfriend, my first girlfriend that I lost my virginity to. Made that 
when she came out here, and it was like one of the last things I had from her. So I moved with it like three times. I don't even use it. It's been outside collecting cobwebs and dust for fucking years. Oof. But I was like, I can't get rid of it because I'll never have that piece of me back. But then what I do is like, <laughs> I guess I don't need <laughs> you it. You don't have it now anyways. No, I know. The only thing that's it's real fine. is the moment. Well, that's exactly. all you have. And she still won't fucking talk to me. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> over, man. Yeah, it's fucking over. I have to accept it. <laughs> she finally, last time I tried, she was like, all right, it's just no point. There's no point. I'm like, well, no, just let's talk. And I'm like, do I just have to accept it? I'll just never be able to fucking talk to you. Yeah. Just one of those losses in life. They, they happen all the Ugh. time to everybody. But then I realized about my shirt, too. Like, I'd c- uncover something from one of the piles. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I forgot about this shirt or this, this toy or this whatever it is. And I was, like, so happy they found it. But I'm like, I didn't miss it at all. I didn't even know I had it. I was just happy when I found it again because yeah. it was my taste, I guess. Right. But, like, well, I was not living in, like, a loss of, like, I don't have this thing. I just forgot I even had it ever. Yeah. It and with those shirts, you. I had to accept this. I was like, yes, this is a cool T-shirt. But it's my 60th cool T-shirt. Like, this is the 60th coolest of all my shirts. And I'm never going to not do my laundry for fucking 18 months straight. So I will get to this. I'm never going to get to the T-shirt. There's always going to be a cooler one to wear. Yep. So I can just get rid of it. Yeah. I it's think not you saying really it's just not had cool. to snap out of it. Yeah. You just got to become aware. In the old that. days, you used to have to be like when I realized something was just horrible. Like something I saw from high school was like completely unfashionable. Mm-hmm. Then I'd be like, oh, get rid of this. But some of the stuff is still good enough. I still have up there. I still have all my extra larges. I should, oh. I should just give those away. Yeah. It's because I think I'm going to be a fat person again. Oh, really? I, yeah. What makes you think that? I was fat, and I was like, I know things go up when and down. When were you fat? I was fat a couple times. I was fat in, in early college, right when I, when I got back from Israel, and I, I was real sedentary, so I didn't move, so I got up to like 225. I was like 50 pounds heavier. Wow. It's a lot. 50 pounds wow. is a lot. How tall are you? 6'3". Wow. And I could carry it okay, but when I sat up in the morning, you just see this like ball oh. in front of you that completely covered where your dick would be. Oh no! Yeah, which is and I'd lie on my side. I remember my sister and my shirt was up a little, so it was like it was like as if it had gone on the ground. You know when like honey hits, like it spills and it like takes the form of the floor. That's what my fat was doing on the side. Oh. And my sister was like, "Ew!" And I was remember going like. I've accepted becoming this. It's okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, yeah, no. But then I lost weight, and then I was like, okay, yeah. But then I, I – yeah, a few years ago, like maybe five, six years You're ago. You're never going to be that big again. Five, six years ago, I went to 215. I couldn't fit into any larges, only extra larges. I couldn't fit into any of them. What happened five or six years ago? I just got a little fatter. How? What happened then? Eight more. Oh, also, uh, one of my, one of my um, depression medications was uh, – this was a couple years ago – was gave me hyperphagia, gave me the ability to um, eat unceasingly forever. I would Ooh. never feel full. Really? Yeah. It was awesome. Wow. It was awesome. I would go on marathons of just just. What binging. does your body do? It gains weight. Oh, and that's horrible. But you never barf. I probably could use that. Oh, yeah. You could totally use it. I Sean Bradley could use that when he, was, when he was coming into uh, the but NBA. I'm so never scared. Weight. I'm, I'm so skinny. Yeah. I'm scared. That's a funny joke you made yesterday on stage. What'd I say? That, that your skinny jeans shouldn't be so baggy. No, I'm wearing baggy skinny jeans. Because they're so thin. Yeah, it's a paradox. When you brought him up, no, you, Tony, you brought Matt up on stage. Yeah. You guys gave each other a hug. What was that? You guys the always friendship. do that? You know or what? Was it just because it's the first time you brought him up as a paid regular? Time. Well, I mean, it just hit me that we're all we're all in now. That's all of us. We're all paid regulars at the comedy. And you store. did the same thing to Willie when you brought Willie up. You guys oh, also yeah. hugged. Yeah, I needed to make him feel good. He would have got all. And that's what that was about? Yeah. Well, that's what I noticed. I saw you guys hug, and I was like, that seemed cool and natural. It seemed like a genuine hug. Oh, you yeah, guys were excited was... for each other. I was. Matt, Matt. I was excited for Willie because I knew how much that meant for him. Oh, I, uh, meant, I meant you too. But, but, but our, the reason Willie why too. I hugged – the reason why – Willie's not a paid regular. He just got no, thrown no, no. last night. I get that feeling though of like before you're a paid yeah, regular, yeah. sometimes Tommy throws you some bones. That's when he, Friday when night? That's a great spot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I never got like, one of those. I would have been so killed exciting. for one of those. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but with Tony, it was like – like I remember when we we all first started, we just used to watch the paid regulars. And want to you know be one. I mean? oh, that, so that's the first because you just yeah. got passed. Yeah, that was. Was that the first time that, you brought him on, or yeah, you brought him as on a paid as a paid regular? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. I mean, that was we've we've worked hours and hours and hours as door guys or lot guys at that at that. When club. did you get past Matt? Like a year ago. Valentine's Day. Early this year. This year. And Tony just just now. Yeah. Like a week or two ago. Yeah. But now you're both paid regulars. Oh, that's, that was a nice moment then. It was a lot of fun. It was very That's nice. why we need a goddamn camera in that fucking room, because that would have been one of those moments. Oh, you know like, what? We got, that- we got a camera in that room. There is a camera room. in the room. There's a security Everything's camera Everything's being recorded now. now in that room, and the main room, and the belly really? room. 
and really yeah what yeah no yeah Ah. Uh, yeah when did that go in last week yeah you haven't been in the office in at least a week no i was there's, in a, there's a new screen in there very nice little it looks like and a it's showing the different screen. rooms yeah oh yeah I mean, it's a straight up security oh, camera. That's like, going to change the era. I don't think so. I don't think so too bad. I you think don't think so too bad? Do you think there could be another time where where two men are having a big dick contest on stage, <laughs> and the way they're judging it is by a naked porn star blowing each of them and judging with her mouth whose was bigger? <laughs> Do you think that kind of stuff can go <laughs> on again? I tell you what, Ari. <laughs> we, with we, the we, only resulting action <laughs> being the the guy who lost here's the how big I, dick contest got banned for two weeks. Oh my god! So no no stage time for two weeks, which means he lost four spots. Oh my god! <laughs> that is what happened. I remember walking uh-huh. in. And on people that. Are like, why only? Why did only Madonna get in trouble? I'm like, well, should have had a bigger dick. Uh-huh. <laughs> you guys were neck and neck, man. We were neck and neck. I mean, it was. It, it I had came like a 12 percent boner, and dick. he had like an 8 percent boner. <laughs> <laughs> <It> was like, <laughs> who was who was more calm in that yeah. really uncomfortable situation? She was like, look at me, look at me. Look at me. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, she man. wanted to get you guys hard. She wanted hard, so, so bad. badly to make me hard. You know what's funny is you guys, no. neither one of you guys could get boners. No. But the person and that. We all had the, boners in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the person that was most embarrassed about you guys not having boners was yeah. her. Oh, yeah. Not you like guys. This. You guys are like. This is epic, and I'm part but of I'm it. But like Don I'm, Barris is dancing not, in front of us. Sam oh, yeah. doing play-by-play. Play. You're not really oh, in it God. for the blowjob. Yeah. You're PJ, in it for the comedy. PJ is literally over, filming her pictures. asshole. You're like, PJ, move away. He is in it, yeah. man. Yeah. His yeah. hand was under her. I don't think on. PJ got it at all. I think PJ was like, oh, yeah, these guys are getting blowjobs. I don't even think he really yeah, saw the fucking side of it. wasn't even about how funny and incredible it was to see. It was so ridiculous. He probably beat off to that later. Her mouth may as well have been somebody throwing, like, a water balloon at my crotch where I'm like I guess it's wet but I don't there's nothing sexual uh, about this well, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean you guys everybody was cracking it was up. so funny and that's why she was like shh, shh, give me, hey give me your eyes look at me look at me look at me and then she had my gaze she, she wanted like, it so but she wanted to just whore it up in front of those people successfully yeah look at me focus blow a load down my throat and you know what the best was that I didn't notice the later and that also, also fucking what's his name was right to my left Big Earl he was playing drums the second Cracking before. Oh. He was literally an inch and a half to my yeah. left. Oh and just my looking God. at like, look, we so like epic. black eyes. And he's like, what the fuck? I'm like, I don't know, man. This is kind of craziness right now. That was one of the things I was laughing at the hardest was just Earl laughing. Uh-huh. <laughs> this goofy Because he's hair. just such a huge human being, such a big guy. Like, lifts weights every day, protein packages and stuff. And all of that muscle was just laughing. The Everything thing, was just making he, this noise. And the it's thing just, that he reminds me of. Every time was as soon as she was done with me, and then she was going over to Madonia. He made out with her first. Um, Who? Madonia and her like kissed made for a while. Her. When? Right after she had. <laughs> right after oh, she that's had, right. Yeah. <laughs> she had, <laughs> I actually remember <laughs> that. I remember thinking, did Dan like just kiss minutes. her? Yeah, Dan just kissed her, and then she started with him. And everyone was like, "Wait, did I?" And then I guess I didn't see that. We'll I, all just block that out of our memory. I think I saw after she kissed him, it looked like she pulled one of your pubes out of her mouth. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Why is that so gross? <laughs> yeah, it it's is. your pubes. I know. <laughs> Only you know what's going on with your pubes. <laughs> and Dan the took fact her, that you're Dan that took gross out about night. it's not Dan a good went home sign. With that night. Yeah, we all yeah. lived together. Oh, real? That's back then. Yeah, man. So yeah, we took her home, and we all hung out for a little bit with her, and and uh, oh, this is the inside scoop. This is later yeah. that night. Yeah. You all hung out. With you her? know what she you said? She dropped. Her? Yeah, we. She. It was me, Dan. So her, they definitely Sandy. had sex. The two of them definitely. Oh went yeah. Had sex. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it went down, man. And so, and then once she, she hung out, what'd you guys talk about and do? Look at this. It, out of nowhere, we're all talking about just bullshit. It was late night. We were laughing at what just happened. It was we were re, like recapping everything in front yeah. of her. And she loved it. She loved the attention. And at one point, she drops, yeah, and right before that, I sucked Polly Shore's dick. <laughs> oh, oh, my yeah. God. And she, and she swallowed his cum. She swallowed. That's great. Yeah. Of course. I, I remember that. this. As she was on stage. Oh, yeah. I remember looking to the left outside the comedy store. It's really not about hoarding at all anymore, is it? <laughs> no. Fuck it's, it. about it's about whoring. <laughs> it's about whoring. <laughs> But I remember being outside, and one of my favorite like images in all of comedy is just even driving down Sunset um, from the east to the west, yep. and you can see inside. You can yeah. sort of see who's on stage. Oh God! If you're in the right-hand yeah. most lane oh, I love through it. that window, 
And if I'm just over there or walking or something, or even outside on the patio, and I just look in because you can't hear anything, and you can't even really see the crowd, you just see the silhouette of a comic on stage from a side angle pretty much, especially if he's turned a little to his right. And it's just like, yeah, it's just beautiful to me. I just love that shot. Almost of anybody. You yeah, see yeah, them yeah. like this from their side. Just It's like, oh, just like, man. You can't see the crowd because they're in darkness. But he's, yeah, I love it. Anyway, I mean, so I looked in there. Uh, that's also you can just see who's on stage. But I looked in there and I was like, oh, there's our naked woman on stage. Um, I guess I'll go inside for a second. <laughs> so he went inside and they were talking or whatever. And she was trying to like lap dance somebody. She was just naked. And then they were like, tur- they talked about a big dick competition. And they're like, who's going to be in it? And everyone just turned and looked at me. I was in the Probably side of the room, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, all right, yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, yeah. and then Madonia came too. But she was naked. I remember her, her saying, they were like, and she's been the star of 17 different pornos. And I was like, ooh. And she goes, oh, that, that's not a lot. That's what I remember her saying. <laughs> like, no, 17 is not very much at all. That's, a, that's like a few months. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. So what'd she tell you when she hung out with you? What, what, what words of wisdom? Uh, to this young lady she gave me no words of wisdom she was just she just was she was kind of there she was laughing at everything she is she just, on anything no i mean she was she was fun i mean yeah she seemed like a nice girl she was yeah. high on dick <laughs> 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 um like did you guys eat anything do you no. remember her laughing about one thing in particular so I'm very intrigued by what, like, what, yeah. how, what? You know what? You know what? Oddly enough, when we got, <laughs> when I knew she was going over there, I remember being kind of excited on my on my way home because I thought, like, oh my god, we're gonna get a private after show. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Like, there's gonna be <laughs> yeah. some crazy shenanigans, show, right? Living. If she's sucking the guys' dicks that are on stage oh, while they're on this stage, is gonna this get, is gonna be this crazy. It's gonna get fucking crazy now. And it wasn't. It was very normal. She's just a normal girl. Kept her clothes on. She just loved all just the. Just think attention. that could be any of our girlfriends when they go out of town someday. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> yeah, that, that, know, that's right? a problem. That's what I see at the comedy store. It's so funny. So like, what I'm if like, she just really accept it? Just accept my it. girlfriend is so happening. sweet, and it's like, what if there's the side Ooh, of her that there I is know. a side of her? That yeah, there's gotta that. be. And I remember it. I remember a side of it. just a, even if it's like a, a millionth of one percent, some part of her wants oh, yeah. to do that, so she's saying no to it. Right. And maybe she's not. I've seen the most horrible things of girls leaving their, the, whoever they're on the date with, going to have sex with somebody they uh, just met. And then oh, going, that happens all the time. And then going back to sit with the boy yeah. and being extra, they're always extra snuggly. This is the oh word of wisdom God. to any guy out there who's jealous, who, who gets worried about, my thing is like, you let her fuck every right to who be cares? jealous. <laughs> if they suddenly start showing you a ton of emotional, a ton of physical emotion, be very, like, worried. Be weary. <laughs> yeah. Like, why are you suddenly being all kissy kissy with me? Yeah. What's like out of nowhere? Uh, like, what did you how do? long have you been out of my sight? Seven yeah. minutes? What happened in those seven uh, minutes? I didn't know uh, about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, that's a quick, I never like, I've seen that over and over really? again. I've seen that on numerous occasions where the girl, that's an observation I made I over years. I was going to say, that's a, a great girl observation. A girl will be extra, yeah, extra snuggly, extra kind, a laugh extra hard. Oh, when they go back into the comedy mm-hmm. showroom. Yeah. Now but I know what you're talking about. They're yeah. away from the horribleness oh, yeah. they just oh, did. Oh, honey. Let's watch yeah. the show together. The yeah. guy has no idea. And She's they like, want to be like, just act natural, act natural. We'll show him you love him. That's natural. And so they go a little too far. They err on the side of letting be right. overly nice. Yeah, they indicate. Yeah. They go a little over the top. Because they don't want to be like, shut up. That's like, what? Why are you? Yeah, they don't, want, they don't want anybody to know. Yeah. I just heard a new thing uh, recently that I never even thought of, and it's so true. When when you break up with a girl or you get dumped or whatever happens, yeah. Uh, you know how you like talk for a little bit afterwards, like you like kind of maintain a a friendship almost. But you're, yeah, those just, are the times where you talk, you still have sex it's once every like yeah, month, yeah. maybe yeah. you have sex, and those are the time, those are the talks that'll get you to hate them forever. Oh yeah, and this is where you guys are also starting to see other people yeah. and maintain a thing through that. They'll say something that hurts you, uh, whatever it is. Adam Sagent told me that um, because he just broke up with his, they they just broke up, uh-huh. and his girlfriend called him one morning at eight in the morning, woke him up, and was like, yeah. "Hey." How are you? And then he just like he right there knew that she just fucked him. <sighs> like he just knew it. Like just by the way. Oh, uh, really? And, and, yeah, and it was true. And he was right. It was it was absolutely true because I know she, I'm friends with one of her friends, and like yeah. she said it was true. And whenever I've gotten just, jealous, like overly jealous and and snooped, mm-hmm. it's been like, oh yeah, this stuff that I it's started finding. Happen, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's the reason I started being jealous because right. I clearly see like something was up. Yeah, they were being a little too right. nice or something. You just know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that too nice thing. <laughs> yeah, they just really are their own species. They really think they can get away with it. It's they can. Like, yeah. But so do dudes. Oh yeah. Yeah, we just get in our heads about it. We don't get in our heads about it. 
I do. I mean, when when you go through a breakup, you mean? Oh no, no. Like when you're when you like do some horrible thing, like when you go cheat and fuck someone in the bathroom while you're with it, which I've never done <laughs> while I've been in a date with a girl. I can't imagine being that kind of like being able to. That's incredible. Pull some that fast. That is incredible. Lately, I've been looking at love and romance as sort of like a moss-covered three-handled fan. <laughs> 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 That's poetry uh, in motion there. Uh, Which is another move by Jeff Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> is that really his move? Yeah. Poetry in motion? Yeah, yeah. It's one of his moves. Oh, that just sounds... See, now, again... All right, here are the options, like that, here are the like options right now. Okay. I can, it's, we're at an hour and 20, and I have to go. So we can either cut this right now and stop it and just say we're done, mm-hmm. or we can come back and finish up whatever we're talking about. I say we shoot for a three-hour podcast with this and make it a two-parter. And make it a two-parter? Make it a two-parter? Yeah. Okay, well, we could do that. Three, only a great hoarding podcast would be just a... Because we haven't stayed long with I don't mind tangents. Yeah, there's yeah, tons yeah, yeah. of tangents full. and procrastination because that's actually that's what, what the doing. hoarding... That's what we say right. the whole time. The yeah. We're just like, let's thing. do a full day of not even getting to this stuff. Yeah. The CDs. What the fuck was that? A whole yeah, day going yeah. through CDs. It was just a bunch of hanging out. We should have been like, just fuck, oh, come Wait on. Wait a second. Is this your uh, wallpaper that Whoa. pops up? Yeah. Ari. This is what you're into? That's my ex-girlfriend's art. Oh. No, you're, she's a really good artist. I could tell you yourself, really man. Her. Why is that your what? background? I could tell you really it's not, That's her. not the same ex-girlfriend that I was that I was talking about before. It's a different, it's, this one's Ashley McComber. She's, uh, she's an artist. She does this stuff. Wow. Yeah. What's it like hooking up with an artist? It's really cool. I've never been so... Um, so, um, academically, um, turned on. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Did you get That's a so lot of scars my out mind of that relationship? Was, my, all my, my bits were coming to me left and right. Oh, what was she doing that would make that happen? She like, would see just... things in a, in a, in a creative way. Oh, that's, that's, that's what it. I need. David I need Taylor's a cool house. artist right check. David Taylor's house. Um, what is that? That's so cool. Uh-huh. Matchstick man, pussy face, I think it's called. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Um, yeah, she would just she would challenge things the same way I would. She'd be like, "Well, why do people do this?" You know, she would, yeah. and I'd be like, "Oh, I've never thought of it." And we get into a, a, a discussion about it as sort of equals, and it's sort of like just keep challenging yourself all the time That's like mentally. Awesome. Yeah, it was great. The only reason it didn't work out is because I'm a fucking dickwad. D- didn't you guys have a? <laughs> did you guys have an open relationship? No, that was point? the one before. Oh, that was the one before. That yeah. seemed cool, man. That's what I was trying to get with her, and she was a bench. She tried, and she was like, "This ain't me." Yeah. What happens in an open relationship? You just say, "Hey, this is an open relationship." It's like uh, I'm gonna be boning other people. What's the big deal? Who cares? I'm on the road. I'm in Edmonton. I want to have sex with okay, somebody. Okay, so what does say, she do? Let's say I'm the girl. girl. Let's, yeah, whatever she wants to let, do too. Let's let's well, play she have it guys out over in your bed. No, well, you have whatever rules make you feel fine. And let's, you guys can maintain regular. So like we had with with Allie, it was like, "Yeah, nobody come over here. Just don't do it here." No. Mm. And obviously, no black. People. Okay, so I'm the girl. Of course, of course. I'm, let's let's role play this. I'm the girl, and you're no, so you. No, there's another tangent. We can't get okay, on. Okay, okay, let's go. But let's start with that next time. No, no, no that's, that's something I want to take for a separate a separate podcast. What is it? Open relationships. It'd be a separate podcast. Oh yeah, I want to be so. in on that one too. You've never done one. I have a lot of questions. Yeah, okay. I mean, okay, maybe you can co-host that, or at least a correspondent. Let's one. let's go to a five. I want you to co-host. I want you to co-host the one with Jeff Ross. I want to do one with him on, on – would you be available? Would you yeah, do it if you were around? Yeah, of course. What, what do you want to do one with him about? Either the Friars Club or mm. just oh. that style of humor in general, that roasty style. They might just go together because he's bringing it back. No one else is doing it. Yeah. He's right. bringing back a section of yeah, comedy. Yeah, it's a great genre of comedy that just It's kinda... like storytelling's around. That's been around. Yeah, sure. No, I, w- I would dead. make it about roasting. I would about call... roasting. Yeah. And he'd probably bring up the Friars yeah. Club shit. Oh, of course. Yeah. That'll totally come up. Yeah. I'd say I'm just interested in that. I was like, that's – me I too. Because he's let shit slip here or there. Not slip. But, Have you, you read know, his book? He's, he's, no. It's great. I should read it. But the only problem with reading that book is that I don't read books. <laughs> so for me, to, I'd I, love I, to be able to read it. But I also want to take karate. Do you know how to read? And I know how to read. Uh, but I don't get to it. I, re- I read one I, book I in think, the last I think if you started that years. one, it would flow yeah, for you. Yeah, it's easy. You're, really? you're, front, you're close enough with him to where you It's you fun, get man. I mean, you could kind of see yourself in those different. Well, I'll, I'll talk about it on here. All right. Well, So we'll, we'll do a two-part on this. Cool. Okay. Um, so where did we leave off? What were we talking about? We were talking about how I want to uh, role play. No, you know, what she was no. saying to no, no, what she was saying to you when she was hanging out with you that porn chick, oh, and, yeah. then, and then we had to take it from there and take it back oh, yeah. to um, finish off wrestling, 
and, and make sure to really round out hoarding. By the way, that right. chick really didn't say anything. We don't. We could just skip that. Okay, she so was, skip that. So we're done with her. So we're gonna yeah, go I mean, back to hoarding. So when we return, Dan ended up fucking in part in the two. End. We'll get back to hoarding and a little bit of wrestling. Definitely some uh, wrestling. This and, is just like when we hoarded. I mean, we <laughs> we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, and it was only supposed to be one day. It's yeah. gonna take a few hours. And we had a pause. Like, right, and we fucking went to the bong, and shit slowed down. All wrong with us. The goddamn gravity. It was the great. It was the great this Puff Daddy in Skunk his magazine. hit album <laughs> Victory, and he once said, after track two, he once said, "It's all fucked up now. What we supposed to do now?" That also reminds Puff me of Daddy a quote of a quote from Zhang Suzu, as most people know as General Tso, um, who said Ooh. when dealing with the Russians, first we will talk to them in the meeting rooms, but soon enough we'll meet them in battle." Oh, wow. He knew goddamn well the fucking diplomacy wasn't going to work, and he didn't want it to work. He wanted to slaughter some goddamn Russians. That's General Tso's chicken. You know what is a great thing to read? What? Quotes from uh, generals warriors. and smart people yeah. and warriors. You can yeah. find them on the internet. Oh, it's amazing. Be uplifting as shit. Dude, Napoleon was the shit. Okay, we got to go. We gotta go. <laughs> All right, anyways. Okay. All right. All right. Um, sorry, stay tuned for this. Okay, but, 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 but you know, the first one, what's your uh, Tony Hinchcliffe at, at Twitter? At tw- at Tony Hinchcliffe at Twitter. That's uh, Tony H plus inch Cliff plus E. You know how to spell it, Tony Hinchcliffe. Sound the, it out. The H newest plus paid inch. regular at the comedy store. Yes. Finally. Yes. It's you guys Matt- both look like you completely belong last night too. Oh, oh so thank fun. you. Coming oh, from you, that thanks, means a lot because you're such a big part I, of that. You place. know what? I mean, I was completely aware that you're in there too. For yeah, at least me too. A little bit, and it, it was, was pretty like, crazy because oh. I, yeah. I didn't know you were really there until like. And then once I noticed you, I'm like... You noticed the light coming on my face when I was looking up General So. <laughs> yeah, that must... Well, I oh, know, we can talk I about know, that, how you feel as a new paid regular, too, when we come back. Sure, we'll talk like, about... I gotta go. I'm, I, I just should have left 35 okay. minutes ago. Okay, goodbye. All right, Matt Edgar, Twitter. Okay. One T. <laughs> All right, so that's it. Ari Shafir, Skeptic Tank, number 31. Finito, thank you guys very much for tuning in. Um, oh, no, not Finito. It's a two-parter. <laughs> So I'm going to release the second part. Those guys came back and talked to me later at the comedy store. We talked upstairs and finished up the conversation. Um, so um, I figure it's not going to take up a whole episode. So I'll release it on Wednesday or Thursday. Let's say Wednesday. Let's say Wednesday. I could do that. Let's say Wednesday. Um, otherwise, you know, check back uh, at com every Monday for new episodes or subscribe on iTunes so they just automatically come in. I guess that's how it works, and you check back or refresh, whatever the fuck you need to do. Um, but thank you guys very much for tuning in. That's it. Ari Shafir, Skeptic Tank, number 31A, Hoarders, part one, however you want to say it. Uh, bye. Everybody do your share. Clean up, clean up. Everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up. Everybody do your share.